Hi and welcome to SOS Ministries. We're just so grateful to God that you were able to join us today. Today I want to talk about a dream I had some weeks ago. A dream that included someone I know very well and someone who knows very well the power of prayer. This individual that I had the dream about um, has been through some stuff in life. They've been through some really hard places and for some for the most part, they're still going through some really hard places, but this person knows the power of prayer. This person knows how to cry out to God in time of need, and this person knows how to just really ask other people to pray on their behalf when things are going wrong. But at the end of the day, when the storm ceases and when everything goes back to normal, this person, like so many of us, like to go back to being in complete control of our own lives. Like we try to put God in the back burner when everything is going right for us. And then when things are not going so good, we know how to call upon him again. But the dream I had was as follows. So this person and I were being driven around the island, an island. I don't know which island it was. It wasn't a place that looked familiar to me, but it was absolutely beautiful. The sand or uh, the beach was brilliant black sand beaches, um, mesmerizing blue water, absolutely stunning view of the island. We were driving around the coastline. And when we, when we, in the, in the beginning of the dream, we were in what we call in the Caribbean a van, what is called or referred to in North America and other parts of the world as a truck. Essentially, it's a vehicle where the front is covered and the driver and maybe one or two passengers can sit at the front and the back is open. And so we were seated, in, we were seated in there and we we're just driving along and uh, things changed in an instant. Things changed drastically in no time at all and the waves that were so beautiful and so mesmerizing suddenly became very violent the waves that were so scenic so so beautiful to look on all of a sudden just changed and the water just became violent the waves were now high and they were coming in so forcefully that they were ending up the water was ending up on the street the waves were now smashing into the vehicle that we were in the waves were smashing into the on the street it was just it had changed and i realized that when the waves were coming, that I was seated directly behind the driver. I was positioned directly behind the driver. And whenever the waves smashed into the vehicles, I was automatically covered. It felt like I was covered and no longer was I at the back of a van or a truck. But now I felt like I was in an, in an enclosed vehicle, much like a bus which was what we say in the Caribbean, or a van, which is what they say in North America and other parts of the world. So when the waves came, I was covered. I was sheltered. I was protected. The waves were smashing into the vehicle, but I was feeling nothing at all. This other person was seated further back from the driver, right towards the end of the vehicle. And when the waves were pummeling into the vehicle, they were getting everything. Every drop of water, they were drenched. They were being pummeled by the water, gasping for air. And we were in the same scene, but we were having such drastically different experiences of the very same situation. And after a while, the driver of the vehicle said to the other person, why don't you come up closer? Why don't you reposition yourself so that you're no longer so far behind and in the open and exposed to the elements, but you're now closer to me and closer to um, a place of protection and shelter. And, you know, I don't claim to be any interpreter of dreams. I don't claim to have any such gift. But it was interesting because I feel like that is something that is so, a situation rather that is so prevalent in our society, a situation that is so common to so many people. There are so many people who know very well the power of prayer, know how to cry out to God when things go wrong, know how to, you know, go to church on those certain Sundays or when things in their life aren't going very well, but who turn their back on God after. 
And it was interesting because what I learned from the dream is that situation in life, things in life, bad things, hard places, valley experiences will happen to everybody. It doesn't matter whether you're saved or unsaved, it will happen to you. But how you experience the things that happen to you in life is directly related to your relationship with God. How you go through the situations and the circumstances in life is related to what your relationship is with God, what your level of intimacy is with God. And if we would take the dream and transport it from the natural to the spiritual, the driver was essentially a type of Christ. So there I was seated right next to the driver, positioned right next to the driver. And so when things started happening, when these gigantic waves started smashing into the vehicle, I was covered, I was sheltered. But the other person who was further away from the driver, or if we can say further away in terms of their relationship with God, who didn't have that close connection with God, was getting pummeled by the very same situation we were going through the same thing experiencing the same waves but we were experiencing it very very differently that's why i say how we experience how we experience our problems how we go through the things that that will affect us in life depends on our relationship with god depends on our relationship essentially with the one who is in control of the vehicle who's in control of life like the driver was god is in control and how we experience how we experience life how we experience our problems is related to our position with god and i'm not just talking about being saved but i'm talking about a life that is hidden with christ in God. I'm talking about a life that is completely surrendered, completely um, intimate with God, with God, with the Savior of the world. And God, what a lot of us don't realize or what a lot of people don't realize, God is able to deal with your situations. God is able to take care of every problem that you will ever have to face. God is well able to make your mountains into molehills. You know that. You've been through that already. You know that God is able to do what no other power can do. Um, but what is important is not just what you want from God, but what God wants from you. And I have found, and I myself have been guilty of this, is that we are often quicker to give God our problems than we are to give him our lives. We know how to give God our problems. We know how to pray when things go bad. We know how to, to seek God and go to church or when things are really rough. But we withhold our lives. We withhold ourselves. And most folks who refuse to surrender their lives to God know very well that they are able to pray earnestly when they need to and that God answers prayers. And it's funny because if it was if it were possible for us to use God, then that would surmise what a lot of us do. We try to use God. We try to make him fit into our lives when it is convenient for us, fit into our lives when things when we feel like we're out like it's out of control, like we have no control, but then we try to maintain control of our overall life when we don't when we feel like, you know, everything is going everything is going okay. So and it's, it's not very different from what happens in the world in general. It's the same thing that happens. Our nations, you know, turn their back on God and, you know, they, they try to because God cannot be discredited. He is God and he doesn't even need our validation. But they try to discredit who God is. Some people will deny that he exists. Some people will deny his relevance in this world. Some people will say, you know, God is a fairy tale and all that stuff. But when situation arises, when tragedy strikes, when something happens that they cannot control or something that feels that it's overwhelming then we start talking about prayer then we start saying you know pray for the families and pray for the nations and pray for this and then we start saying oh you know our thoughts and prayers are with you but you're the same person who denied god denied his power denied his strength denied his relevance it seems like it is the height of hypocrisy if you know that God is able to deal with your problems, then you cannot deny him. If you know that God is able to take care of every situation that you're in, then why not give him yourself? So I say, even as the prophet Elijah says to the children of Israel, how long? How long will you halt between two opinions? How long will you, in my own words, how long will you straddle the fence? 
If the Lord is God, then why don't you serve him? If you know that he has absolutely all power in heaven and on earth, if you know that he answers prayers, why will you not serve him? If God is God, then serve him today is my encouragement. And if he's not God, if you don't believe that he's God, then you wouldn't be praying to him. If you didn't believe that he was God and he was all powerful, you wouldn't be asking for prayers. You wouldn't be seeking help when things are low you either believe or you don't and you know even even as joshua said to the children of, of israel when they were going back and forth between serving god and serving their own idols he said to them you need to make a choice like he confronted them he says choose ye this day whom you will serve you have to we cannot continue going back and forth. You cannot continue, you know, coming close to God and joining on to him when things are bad. And then when things are, when things are okay, when, or when you feel like you have life under control, just turning your back on him. He says, if God is God, choose this day whom you will serve. And you know, the, the children of Israel, their response was so very interesting because they were in a position where they their backs were turned on God. They weren't paying attention to God. They were serving their own idols. But when Joshua confronted them, they reflected on who God was. They reflected on all that God had done for them. And their response to Joshua's challenge was God forbid that we should serve any other God because we remember that the that Jehovah is the God who led us out of the land of Egypt. We remember that this God, the true and living God, is the God that we cried out to for manna in the desert. We remember that this God is the one who saved us from a life of slavery. This God is the God who delivered us from the hand of our enemy so god forbid that we should serve any other god and i pose that challenge to you today Cho choose you this day whom you will serve reflect on it like the children of israel did god forbid that you should serve a god who wasn't there for you or you should or you should serve a god who has no power and anything we put above the almighty God has become a God to us. So you may be like, well, you know, I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. I may not be a Christian. I may not be saved, but I believe I don't serve any other gods. But I'm telling you today that anything that you put above God has become your God. If you would think of all the times that God has come through for you, if you would think about the blessings of God upon your life, if you would think about all the ways that he has made for you, if you would think about all the things that God had for you, if you were honest, you would know that had it not been for God on your side, then you wouldn't be where you are today. Some of you wouldn't be alive today. Some of you wouldn't be in the positions that you are today. Some of you, you wouldn't be as blessed as you are today. So say like the children of Israel, God forbid that I should serve or I should withhold myself from God who has been so good to me. God forbid that I would withhold my heart and my life from a God who had done so much for me. This isn't about whether or not God answers sinners' prayers. It's so much deeper than this. It is about what God requires of you. It is about what God wants of you. Have you ever stopped to ask yourself, what does God want from me? We know how to make demands of God. We know how to ask him for blessings every day. We know how to pray for those things that we want. We know how to tell him what we want. But how often do we stop to ask, what do you want from me? What do you want from me? Take a moment from making demands on God and ask him, what do you want from me? God can take care of your problems. Your everything you're going through is a light thing to the Almighty God. There's nothing that is too big or too small for him to take care of. But what he really wants is you. What he really wants is intimacy with you. What he really wants is relationship with you. What he really wants is communion with you. What he really wants is your heart. God will take care of you. Anybody who trusts in God has the guaranteed protection of God. Anyone who believes in and trusts in and surrenders their life to God, God will take care of. God is a faithful God.
he does not he will never leave his children in situations without his divine intervention he's not going to turn his back on you as long as you are a child of god you have access to the promises of god you have access to the blessings of god so instead of just trying to get blessed sometimes when things are wrong you can either you can actually live in relationship with god and reap the benefits of being a child of god every single day god can take care of your problems but what he wants is you that's why exodus 15 verse 26 says if you would diligently listen and hearken unto the voice of the lord your god if you will do that which is right in his sight if you will listen to his commandments if you will obey his statutes the word of god says i will put none of these diseases upon you that i have brought upon the egyptians for i am the lord that healed you that is a promise of god exodus chapter 23 verse 25 says and you shall serve the lord your god and he will bless your bread and he will bless your water and he will take sickness away from the midst of you that is a promise for those who are in relationship with god glory be to god psalm 37 verse 4 says delight yourself in the lord and he will give you the desires of your heart delight yourself in god and he will give you what your heart desires Joshua chapter 1 verse 8 says keep this book of the law which refers you know which is now referring to the Bible keep this book of the law always on your lips meditate on it day and night why so that you and be careful to do everything in it then will you be prosperous and successful that's the word of God that applies to anybody and everybody will actually believe in God and surrender their lives to God and do what he wants them to do. You will be prosperous and successful. These are not my words. This is the word of God. Don't just be caught up on in getting stuff from God and not realizing that if you actually have God, if God is actually your God and your savior, then you have access to everything that he has once he becomes your father once you are a child a son or a daughter of god then everything that he has belongs to you you are ear to amazing promises <laughs> that's that's what you get for being a child of god you don't have to go back and forth you don't have to you know go back and forth and hop between two opinions and run to him when things are bad and leave him when he wants you and some of you may remember the, the, the first message, the New Year's message for 2018. And if you haven't listened to it, I encourage you to do so. Um, if you have listened to it, it's also worth um, listening to again. And um, it says, it was from, the, the scripture was taken from Genesis 15, 28. And it's when God said to Jacob, behold, I am with you. He says to Jacob, I will keep you in all the places where you go. And I will bring you again into the land of promise, for I will not leave you until I have done all that which I have spoken to you of. Amazing promise. It's, it's a verse of scripture that I find myself going back to again and again and again. Like I just cannot get enough of it. It is such a beautiful and such a profound promise. And again, I encourage you to listen to the message again. But the amazing story doesn't end there. And Jacob's response to God's promise demands our attention. When Jacob hears the promise of God, when God tells Jacob, don't worry, I got you. I will keep you. I will sustain you wherever you go. I am with you. He says, and I'll bring you back again because every promise I have ever made to you, I will fulfill. Jacob in Genesis 15, 20, 21, he was so floored by the promise of God. He was so overwhelmed by the goodness of God. He was so grateful for the blessings of God, so grateful for the promises of God and the richness of that promise. He says, you know what? And I'm paraphrasing here. He says, if you're going to do all that for me, if you're going to bless me and you're going to keep me and you're going to provide for me and you're going to, you know, give me raiment and give me food and all that, then he says, then I'm, I'm going to serve you as my God. <laughs> He said, if you're going to be good to me, if you're going to bless me, then I will make you my God. 
I will serve you as my God. I will surrender everything to you. He says in essence, I am so excited by this promise and I'm so grateful for it that I am going to enter into a covenant relationship with you. I am going to make a vow to you. I am going to make you a promise that I am going to serve you and I am going to live forever with you as my God. My challenge to you today, if you have not yet surrendered your life to God, and if you've ever prayed a prayer and has seen the answer, if God has ever done anything for you, the richness of the promises of God, they can all belong to you if you would surrender to God. Be like Jacob today. Say, God, if you have been so good to me, if you have never left me, if you have blessed me time and time and time again, my response, the only reasonable response is that I'm going to live for you, that I'm going to serve you, that I'm going to make you my God. I will make you my God because you've been good. You have been good to me. You have blessed me even when I didn't deserve it. Even when I wasn't, you know, I wasn't paying attention to you or even when I, I wasn't, I wasn't interested in what you had to offer. You were still good to me. You still blessed me. So this is my time, God, where I give you what you want. I give you my heart. I give you my life. I give you myself. I will make you my God because you've been good to me. And I pray that this will be your response today. In the light of all God has done for you, in the light of all his promises, you can't just accept the promises of God and get all happy about it and reject God himself. You can't just get excited about God says, you know, you're blessed and you get excited about all the message of messages about blessings and, and overflow and breakthrough, but then you withhold yourself from God. You don't give anything you just want to get. You just want to receive and you don't want to, God has been good to you. Why do you continue to withhold yourself from God? Why do you continue to withhold what he really wants from you. And I know that for many of us today, for many who have not given their lives to Christ, and you know, sometimes we get afraid about what we're going to have to leave behind and what we're going to have to give up. And you know, things mean so much to us. And it feels like, oh my gosh, you know, if I become a Christian, if I give my heart to the Lord, if I start following God, then I'm going to be missing out on this. And I'm going to be, you know, I'm going to have to give that up. And even I remember years ago when I got saved, I had a dream with a, a, a cousin of mine saying, you're going to do this? <laughs> and she said to me in the dream, she said, you're missing out. She said, you're going to miss out on all the stuff that we used to do and all the places that we used to go and all the things. She's like, you're going to be missing out. And I'm sure that that is the, the whole back or that is the setback for so many of you today. You feel like if you surrender to God, you're going to be missing out. And I'm not going to sit here and pretend that when you're living a life of sin or when you're doing your own thing, it doesn't feel good. At least temporarily, it feels good. Every saint has once been there where sin actually felt good. So I'm not going to pretend that, you know, it, it doesn't feel good at least for a moment. But I'm going to tell you this, that if you really knew the depth and the length and the breadth of God's love for you, then nothing in your life would be comparable to, 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 to the love of God, that you would easily, freely, willingly give up everything if you had a true, real revelation of the love of God for you. If you knew how much you meant to God, if you knew how much God loves you, if you only knew how much the creator of heaven and earth loves you and how much he wants relationship with you and all that he has done for you and will continue to do for you then there is nothing that can be compared with that love there is nothing that would not be easy to give up once you get it once you get the knowledge is what I always say, knowledge of the love of God for you will revolutionize your life. You need to know how much God loves you and how much he cares for you. And this is my prayer for you today. I pray today that the revealed love of God will 
overwhelm your soul. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth that the love that God has for you will be revealed to you like never before. I pray for you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth that your eyes will be open to see the love, that your ears will be unstopped, that you will hear it. I pray that every sense in your body will be heightened, that the awareness of the love of God for you will saturate every pore and get you to that place where you're so in awe of that God who is so holy and so righteous and so amazing could love somebody like you that all you will do is surrender everything to God. Nothing in this world, nobody in this world will ever love you like God. You're not missing out on anything if you surrender to God. And I pray that he will show you his love today. I say boldly and I say without hesitation that you do not know love until you know the love that God has for you. You don't know the depth of love. You don't know the purest, most amazing, just breathtaking. You don't know love in its fullness until you know that the love that God has for you. Let God love you into wholeness. He doesn't just want to solve your problems. He actually wants your heart. He doesn't just want to take care of your needs. He wants to take care of you. He wants intimacy with you. He wants relationship with you. He wants oneness with you. Why do you continue to withhold yourself from a God you know has been good? If God is God today, serve him. If God has been good to you today, serve him. Choose ye this day whom you will serve. Because you, all of us will go through problems in life. But our relationship with God will, ex, will, will determine how we experience those problems. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth that you will give your heart to God today. I pray that you will finally decide to just lay it all at the altar and give him your everything and see how God can take nothing and make something beautiful of your life. Just like he did for me. He took my nothingness. He took my mess. He took my shame. He took my stuff. He molded. He broke. He melted. He did what he needed to do. And he's making. He's made something beautiful of my life. And that's what he wants to do for you. The word of God says. Behold I stand at the door and knock. If you hear him. If you. He's knocking on the doors of your heart. If you will hear him. If you will hearken. If you will open your heart to him. He will come. Come in. He will dwell with you. He will make your life worth living. I pray today that you will surrender your heart to the Lord. Because that is the most important decision you will ever make. And it is a decision that you will never, you will never regret. If you, if that is you today and you would like to surrender your heart to the Lord, I pray, pray this prayer with me. We're going to say, Father, in the name of Jesus. We thank you for your son. We thank you for what you have done. We thank you for the blood. We thank you, oh God, that you sent your only begotten son to die. That I do not have to die, but that I can have everlasting life. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that you'd forgive me for my sins. I pray that you'd forgive me, oh God, for every transgression. I pray that you'd wash me over again in your blood. I pray that you'd make me a brand new person. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth that you would transform my life for your glory. Say thank you, oh God, that you've been so good to me and that you've been so patient with me, that you have kept me, oh God Almighty, up to this point. And at this time, God, I want to surrender my life to you. Take my life. Take me, God, as I am and mold me into what you want me to be. Give me the strength to walk this life. Give me the strength to walk the straight and narrow, God, in the name of Jesus. Help me to be more like you every day. I want to be the person, the man, the woman that you created me to be. I want to be your son. I want to be your daughter. Forgive my sins and make me one of yours in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And if you've prayed this prayer with us today, we believe that you have been saved. And now 
as with any newborn babe, you're going to need to be nurtured and you're going to need to be fed and you're going to need to be around those who are able to take care of you. If you don't have a, a church home, I encourage you to find somewhere where you can grow spiritu spiritually. Find somewhere where, you know, the teachings and everything is based on the word of God and Develop a relationship with God. Develop a relationship with other believers. Allow God to feed you. Allow him to mold you. Allow him to, to do a work in your life. You cannot be a Christian on your own. It doesn't matter what anybody has ever said. There's no such thing. You need to belong to a part of a local church. You need to be able to serve in a local church. You need to... There's, there's a lot more than just praying the prayer of salvation. That God, God actually requires us to be part of a local body. And um, I pray that you'll find somewhere where you, you can be fed and we will continue to pray for you and pray that God will continue to work his plan and his purpose out in your life. We're so excited that you have made this decision to serve the Lord. And again, it is a decision that you will never regret. God is God and you have decided to serve him. God bless you. God bless you. And until next time, we pray that God will keep you in perfect peace. God bless you.